Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here for KW Bonsai. Today we're going to be working on my Ficus Rattusa Bonsai. Uh, this is the third video of this tree since we defoliated it and did a structural pruning in July of this year. So, the reason we're working on it today is our shoots are coming out quite strongly now and we're going to do some directional pruning we're going to remove shoots we don't want and give the tree a general tidying up. So let's get to it. In the previous videos, this has always been the back of the tree. And I'm liking it more as the front now. I think the roots are better from this side. They, uh, they're smaller, they flow better. If I change the tree around, This has always been the front. Um, it's got this big thick root here, which we'll probably do some carving to it um, next spring. We won't touch it for now. And it's got kind of, yeah, the roots just aren't as fine looking and not quite as nice from this side. So I think we're going to go back to this being the front of the tree and style it accordingly. Um, it'll always have the option of you know either side being the front because it's quite a symmetrical tree. So it's not really you know too important. We'll style it so it looks good from all directions. So the first thing we want to do today is some of the shoots are getting quite long. You can see they're sticking up out of the profile of the canopy. So we want to do some directional pruning on those longer shoots and get them, you know, more compact. So let's start with that. So directional pruning just involves pruning the shoot back just above a leaf that faces in the direction that you want the new growth to come in. So at the base of each of these leaves is a little bud. So if you prune it off, if I were to prune this branch off to here above this leaf, our new growth would start from the bud at the base of this leaf and it would go towards the outside, so towards you. If I were to prune it back to here, the first leaf is pointing away from you. So at the base of that leaf there'd be a bud that would form and the new growth would come slightly in the back direction. So we want all our new growth to fan out from the center of the tree. We don't want growth coming in towards the center of the tree and crossing and making it look cluttered. So on this shoot I'm going to prune it back we have two outward facing leaves here and here, so I'm going to prune it just above those. And you always leave a little, a little bit of a stub so you're not damaging your leaf buds, so if it dries out a bit it won't kill off the leaf buds that are at the base of these leaves. And then later on you can go in and clean that stub up after it's dried up and your new shoots have been coming out. So, that's the first thing we're going to do is get the canopy pruned down in height so we don't have a lot of branches sticking up. So on this one I'm going to prune back to this outward facing leaf here. And on this one we're going to go back to here. If you don't have a leaf that's growing in the ideal direction you've got to just prune it back and redirect it later on. The new growth will come in maybe the wrong direction as that shoot extends and you can prune it again and get it going in the right direction. So this one we don't have any leaves going in the right direction until quite low down here. So we'll take it, we'll take it right back there. 
it's close to the right direction. It's not perfect. And we're after a rounded profile on top. And you always want to step back and look at your tree from the distance. You can see the latex coming out of the cut points. It's like a milky white sap. Some people are sensitive to latex. They have latex allergies. So you'd want to use gloves if you're handling your ficus tree and pruning it. It doesn't seem to bother me, so I don't use gloves. Okay, we'll start uh, limiting shoots we don't want now. So we're going above looking down at the tree now. And right here, you can see we've got one, two, three, four shoots coming out of the same spot. So we don't want that. It's just going to cause a bulge there in the branch. So we want to pick our best shoots, ones that are fanning outwards. So we're going to get rid of these lower ones that aren't fanning out as nicely. And we're going to reduce it back to two shoots. You always want one shoot dividing into two, and then the two dividing into four, four into eight, and so on. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for is branches that have too many shoots coming off. Just checking it over. Most of it's fairly good because we did this in the last video. And I'm also looking for crossing branches. So if you look down here, I've got one shoot that crosses in front of another one. So I want to eliminate anything that crosses. And I'm going to pick the best branches. So this one on this side has to go. That gives this shoot light. Here we've got two shoots coming from almost the same spot and one is on the inside of a bend so we'll get rid of that one. Like so. You can see as the leaves grow in it gets harder and harder to see the structure of the tree. So you really have to look. Here I've got a shoot that's on top of another one that we want to remove. I've got one growing down here. I've got one growing from this branch that's growing in towards the center of the tree. We want to get rid of that. I do have some branches growing inwards on some of the taller trunks. We don't want to have like a empty hole in the center of the tree. You have to have some foliage that's quite vertical to fill in the center of the tree. I got a branch growing underneath another here. I'm going to remove. So the idea is to get light to each part of each part of the branch. We don't want branches crossing and shading out the other ones. So I'll keep working away at the structure of the tree. Eliminating crossing branches, shoots that are growing from bad spots, and ones that are overlapping, blocking out others. We'll clean that up and then we'll come back. When we're doing this structural work, uh, it's important to look all sides of the tree, all the angles, see what's in the way of other branches. We, uh, we have a lot of shoots growing in, sort of uh, close to the trunks here. Some of them we probably don't want. We do want to be able to see this trunk structure eventually. We don't want it all shielded by foliage. We want our foliage more up top. So some of these shoots we probably will remove. 
Uh, there's one growing inside here. Get rid of that one. Here we've got two branches growing out of the same spot. I think we'll move that leaf. And I think we'll remove the one facing us. Keep our side branch. We've got two branches growing from the same spot. I think we'll get rid of this crossing horizontal one. I got one growing on the inside here. I'll get rid of that. You'll notice the new leaves have come in quite a bit smaller than the original ones. Which is kind of nice. If we keep pruning the tips, they'll stay pretty small. It's when you let the shoots grow really long, you get the great big leaves on them. We're doing a lot of directional pruning on the tips of these branches, just to redirect them more horizontally. Okay, so that's looking better. Um, we've done a lot of directional pruning, so when our new growth comes in, It'll be more horizontal and fan out, creating a, a wider canopy on the tree. Okay, so I'm happy with the structural pruning of it now. Um, and again, the reason you've got to keep up on it after defoliating and all your new shoots come in, if you just leave it grow without pruning it, you're just going to end up with a tangled mess on top. And so as these new shoots come out, it's important to keep up with them, keep them trimmed, eliminate all the ones that are growing where you don't want them, and keep the tree clean because as this canopy grows it's going to get very dense and we just won't be able to see what's going on. So the next thing I want to do, I want to clean up the tree. So I've got a few roots that are crossing on an angle here which I don't like. On a mature tree, all the roots flow fairly vertically into the soil line. Uh, you do get some ficuses that have kind of crossing roots and that, but uh, on a really you know old mature trunk, most of the roots that survive are the ones that go down into the soil on a straight line. So we're going to eliminate these crossing roots. So we have to find the start of it right here. And we'll cut it off and thread it out. So there's our root. I've got a few aerial roots here that have dried up that I'll trim off. They grew this year didn't make it to the soil, so... I've got another crossing root here we can eliminate. One there. That one off too. go. Got another one here and here. I think we'll get rid of also. How's that one? And I've got one over this side. Quite a thick one, so let's get rid of that one. Yeah, so that's all our major crossing roots removed. I'm just going to 
There's a weird root here. I think we got to get rid of also. The next thing we want to do is clean up the roots. Um, you can see at the base of the roots, they're kind of black and discolored. And that's because there's been moss growing on them. So we want to pick all the moss off and get our toothbrush and water and try and clean all the algae and any discoloration off the roots. So let's do that next. So we're just going to come in with our tweezers and start cleaning up moss and algae for starters. The next step after picking all the moss off the tree with tweezers is to get a toothbrush with just plain water and just start scrubbing the roots and the trunk to get it nice and clean. When you have clean roots and a trunk it gives the tree a more mature look. Trees that are old trees in nature get washed by the rain and they're up high off the ground so they don't get dew so the roots stay pretty clean and you won't see the final effect of this until it all dries up So we'll come back when I've got all the roots and the trunk cleaned up and we'll have a look at it. Okay, I've got the roots and trunk cleaned up the best I can. Um, as a ficus tree gets older, the bark kind of gets a lighter color. And we'll just have to wait till these get a little more mature before it kind of gets a nice bleached look to it. Um, there is a, a bulge in the one root here that we're going to have to do some carving to in spring. So we won't do that now. Uh, the next thing, while we're waiting for this to dry to kind of see the final effect of cleaning the roots and trunk, we'll start working on the landscape. So I've got a lot of weeds in here that we're going to pick out and we're going to prune our moss up so I'll pick the weeds out first and then we'll come back and start on the moss okay so I've done my weeding in the last video we put a layer of sand on top of the bonsai soil as a top dressing and what I found first of all moss grows really well in the sand top dressing and the reason is the sand is actually wicking moisture out of the bonsai soil in the pot so when the sands moist on top your soils moist down below when the sand starts to dry out on top you know your bonsai soils dried out below so it's a good indicator the sands a really good indicator of the moisture levels in your pot and it tends to keep your pot at a more even moisture level especially in these flat tray type landscape pots it uh, you don't get too much wetness at the bottom of the pot because the sand kind of wicks it all up to the surface so I found the sand top dressing a really good thing for bonsai and your moss grows like crazy in it because it stays moist until it dries out. So the next thing we're going to do, we're, we're going to prune up the moss. We've got spots where it's overhanging the pot here. We don't want that. So we'll just come in and prune it away from the lip of the pot. And then we're also going to give it a shorten it all. So we're going to give it a haircut. To 
keep it nice and trim. Now in the last video we also kept the moss away from the root base of the tree. We had sort of a ring of sand around it. Well the moss is grown in towards the tree and in some places it's starting to climb up the roots. So we're gonna have to do some you know selective picking off of the moss from the surface just to get it back from the tree base. So I just get the tweezers and pull the clumps of moss off which aren't actually clumps they're just Pull the strands of moss off. Just to keep it clear from the base of the tree so it doesn't start climbing up the trunk again. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Pruning moss, cleaning it up. So we'll come back when I've got the landscape all cleaned up. I've got the moss all pruned up. Looks a lot nicer, short and trim like that. There's the moss. All cleaned up from the edge of the pot. So that's all the work we'll be doing on our ficus today. It'll be uh, kind of fun watching the canopy grow in. So it gets nice and full and looking like a mature ficus tree. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I try and answer all the questions that people send in, comments and that, but sometimes I miss some. Sometimes there's no reply button. Sometimes I don't get an email notification. So if you have a question and I missed it, just send it again and hopefully I'll get it. Um, all the pictures of our club show are posted on my Google Plus page. So if you click the link on the channel page, the little Google Plus symbol, you can scroll down and find the club photos from this year. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Nigel Saunders. We'll see you next time.